Mind is the power that molds and makes, and man is mind, and evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills, brings forth a thousand joys, a thousand ills. He thinks in secret, and it comes to pass. Environment is but his looking glass. That, my friends, is the opening to As a Man Thinketh, my favorite book of all time. What is this? It's a ticket. We are, I am going to read this whole book day by day. As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. It is a classic. If you have not read it, welcome to a new world. And not even just reading it once, reading it over and over and over is really the key to learning. I'm Carla Elizondo, Inside Talk Show. It's an inside job where I read the most amazing books of all time, learning, sharing wisdom, um, creating a community of like-minded people. So thank you for joining me. We're going to dive right in. So As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, uh, the foreword. Let's read the foreword together. This little volume, the result of meditation and experience, is not intended as an exhaustive treatise on the much written upon subject of the power of thought. There's a lot written on the power of thought, as we know. And this book was actually written, I think, in the early um, 20th century, uh, 1910. 1910. So he's saying that this is not a big exhaustive, you know, another thing about the power of thought. It is suggestive rather than explanatory. Its object being to stimulate men and women to, dis to the discovery and perception of the truth that they themselves are makers of themselves. By virtue of thoughts which they choose and encourage, that mind is the master weaver, both of the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance. And that as they may have hitherto woven in ignorance and pain, they may now weave in enlightenment and happiness. James Allen. I love that. Let's dive in. Chapter one, thought and character. The aphorism as a man thinking it thinketh in his heart, so is he, not only embraces the whole of man's being, but is so comprehensive as to reach out to every condition and circumstance of his life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And if you've followed me or watched anything, this is our mind. This is our heart, our heart of hearts. This is a better, bigger version. This is our mind conscious thinking, subconscious feeling. This is our heart, our heart of hearts. Great wisdoms, the Greeks, Egyptians, philosophers of past, in the Bible even, guard your heart and your mind. Where is your heart? It's not the beating sack in your chest. It's actually in your subconscious mind. This is where we feel. This is where we get the feels. It gets under our skin. We get emotionally involved with something in our heart of hearts. And if it's in there, ooh, it will come to pass. So he's saying, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not only embraces the whole of a man's being, but is so comprehensive as to reach out to every condition and circumstance of his life. A man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of all of his thoughts. We become what we think about. We become what is involved in our subconscious mind. As the plant springs from and could not be without the seed, so every act of man springs from the hidden seed of thought and could not have appeared without them. Again, using this diagram, the conscious thinking mind is our seed house. This is where we think. This is where we keep our thoughts. Our seeds drop down into the soil of the subconscious mind. This is where it grows. This is where we get emotionally involved within it, wrap it up with emotion and feeling. And once it's here, it will produce, it will come forth through action, through our physical body and create our circumstances or the results in our life. So thoughts are seeds down into the garden, producing, growing in abundance. Your mind is a garden, your thoughts are seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. What are you growing? Look at your circumstances, look at your, look at your results. That is a direct indication of what you've been getting emotionally involved with. So as a plant springs from and could not be without the seed, so every act of man springs from the hidden seeds of thought and could not have appeared without them. This applies equally to those acts called spontaneous and unpremeditated as those which are deliberately executed. Act 
is the blossom of thought and joy and suffering are its fruits. So action is the blossom or the, the fruitage of thought and either it's joy or suffering. Thus does a man garner in the sweet and bitter fruitage of his own husbandry. We are experiencing any circumstance or situation by the way we think about it. And so a lot of times we can get caught up in, well, I didn't, this is not my fault. I didn't cause this circumstance or I didn't attract this situation. You, you probably didn't, other people did, but we are all one in this together. What were your thoughts about it? We can't not be involved. We can't not think about something and determined and, and by your thoughts, determine your experience of a situation. Victor Frankl, man's search for meaning in the Holocaust, in the most atrocious situations ever. He thought about it differently. And it literally not just saved his soul and his sanity, but he was able to get out, thank God, and become a prolific psychologist psychiatrist psychologist teacher and studier of the mind and how our mind does affect our situations it's so so powerful thought in the mind hath made us what we are by thought was wrought and built if a man's mind hath evil thoughts pain comes on him as the wheel the ox behind <laughs> that's a little if one endure in purity of thought joy follows him as his own shadow sure man is a growth man is a growth by law and not a certain and not a creation of artifice is that my saying that right and cause and effect is as absolute and undeviating in the hidden realm of thought as it is in the visible world of material things i'll leave right there it's just reiterating that there are laws that rule this physical earth we're on gravity gestation polarity rhythm there's different laws the law of you know polarity opposites as above so below night day light dark hot cold those are a bunch of laws mixed together but um we have laws of this universe and if we don't obey them for example gravity is the easiest one if we don't obey and respect have reverence for gravity or electricity wow that's well that's not a law but it's a power it sure is a power the ocean the tides nature is so strong but they follow laws they follow rhythms they follow they don't shock us they follow they're predictable yeah they change here and there but water isn't all of a sudden going to start going upwards into the air i mean unless there's a tornado or wind but you know it water stays here and it it goes this way it doesn't go this way so we must obey the laws just as nature does nature doesn't have free will like we do we think we can buck the system we think we can break the laws and when we break the laws we pay the consequences and so look at your life are you obeying the laws of the universe cause and effect are you upset by the cause by the effects in your life well what was the source trace it back to the cause if we are looking at it from this lens this is just very simple i know and there's nuances but this is basics so let's understand this because this is helpful so depending on our circumstance or our results in life if we backtrace it what actions caused these results or circumstances actions cause results and circumstances if people didn't take action and did anything then the results and circumstances wouldn't come to be us and everybody else so let's look at the circumstances and results what actions caused them well, what emotions cause those actions? Because we do not take one action without being emotionally involved or wanting or having a desire. So what emotions or feelings cause that action to cause that result? Then further, what thoughts caused this emotion? We feel, we feel things when we hear things. Our thoughts make us feel things. 
we don't have a thought without a feeling. It's impossible. Think about anything. You feel a certain way about it. And you either like it or you don't. I mean, that's a simplistic way to say it. So what are you thinking? What are you feeling? How is it causing you to act? And what are the results that follow? Beyond this, the thoughts you have, what are, these are your five senses, see, hear, smell, taste, touch. What is coming into this beautiful thought house? What are you listening to? What are you looking at? What are you surrounding yourself with? What is your, the information you're soaking in? And then what are you yourself kicking up inside? What is your mental diet? What are you thinking about? Your thoughts are the seeds which are planted in your heart or your garden of the mind. Once here, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He will produce, it will impel you to act. And then you get results and circumstances that follow. So I hope that made sense. I love this book so much. Character and Thought um, from As a Man Thinketh. We're going to go through this book and I'm really excited about it. So have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday. Happy Friday. And I will see y'all on Monday.